Hi, my name is Gwen Roth and I'm the Education Specialist with the Hamilton County Soil and Water Conservation District. Today we're going to talk about watersheds and how you affect the watersheds in our local area. So, you might ask, what's a watershed? Well, an easy definition of a watershed is an area of land that drains to one particular body of water. So as you see from my Enviroscape model here, we have this whole body of, or this whole land mass drains downhill, because we know water doesn't flow uphill unless it's forced, drains downhill into the Ohio River. You might have seen some signs around town that look kind of like this. These are education signs that we use to teach people about where our water flows. And in this case, it sheds or flows into the Mill Creek. You also might have seen some signs around town on local storm drains that look like this. And these simply say no dumping drains to local creek or stream. Again, an education awareness that lets people know that our storm drains go directly to our creeks and streams. So we're gonna use this watershed model today to talk a little bit about how our water flows and the ways that we can affect that water, both positively and negatively. So we have our Enviroscape model here. We have a little farm over in this area, maybe a factory over here, a nature preserve. Now remember a nature preserve is not just a forest or green space, but it's a place that's set aside to help preserve or protect the natural area. Next to the nature preserve we have a golf course, and next to the golf course, we have a little neighborhood where they might be building a new house or apartment. We also have a few cars for our model. And lastly, you all remember the book about Clifford the Big Red Dog. Well, I don't have Clifford the Big Red Dog, but I have Clifford the Big Yellow Dog. And we're gonna put him right there in the neighborhood. I also have a few cows out on our farm. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use some things called chemicals. And I don't want you to always think that chemicals are bad, because chemicals might not necessarily all be bad. Sometimes we think bad things, but we use chemicals all the time. There's chemicals in our shampoo, in our toothpaste, in our conditioners, and all different kinds of things to help us clean things, to help us use things better. So we're gonna use some chemicals today, and the first chemical we're gonna use is a chemical called a fertilizer. Now a fertilizer is something that we use to help our plants to grow. Now, for instance, there are some types of fertilizers that are manufactured, and there are some types of fertilizers that are natural, like compost or different types of things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little fertilizer on the farm field. And a farmer might use fertilizer on his field to help the corn grow, to help his beans grow, to help the pumpkins grow so that we can have jack-o'-lanterns. We might also put some fertilizer outside the factory. Maybe they're trying to grow some flowers or trees along the street. We might put some fertilizer in the golf course to help the grass on a golf course grow. Or maybe even some fertilizers in some of our homes to help our grass grow, to help our trees grow. Maybe we wanna grow some flowers. And maybe after that construction site is finished building, they're gonna want to plant grass and green space there as well. Now, the next chemical we have is a chemical called a pesticide. Now a pesticide is a chemical that we use to get rid of pests. We use it to keep bugs away from us, to keep mice away and things like that. So again, a farm might use some pesticide to get rid of some of the bugs because if they just spend all that time and energy growing pumpkins, they don't want the beetles to eat them all. Maybe there might be some around the factory. Think about that, if they're making cereal, we don't want roaches and ants crawling around there all the time. Maybe we'll put a little pesticide on the golf course, keep the mosquitoes away or maybe some around our homes so we don't have termites. You know what, we might even have some pesticides on Clifford. Fleas and tick sprays, those are things that we use to keep bugs away from Clifford. Now the next thing I'm gonna put on a model is not a chemical. The next thing I'm gonna put on our model is soil. Now sometimes we call soil dirt. I don't like to use the D word. Because when, when we hear the word dirt, sometimes we think dirty things. We think gross things. Soil is not gross. We use soil to grow all of our food, so we're definitely gonna have some soil on the farm here. We're gonna have soil in the nature preserve where there's places where the trees and plants aren't growing and the soil is exposed. And obviously there's soil at the construction site because they're breaking down trees and then we also might have some soil in our ditches and along the riverbanks as well. Now, next thing I have to add to our model is a little bit of trash or litter. 
And while we all know trash and litter are not good things in our neighborhood, we still see them all the time. Maybe somebody was driving down the street one day and they took some trash and they threw it out their car window thinking they might not see it again. Or maybe we just try to do everything right and we set our trash can out on the curb and then overnight squirrels or raccoons or possums or something got into it and spread trash away. Maybe somebody was on a walk in the nature preserve and some trash fell out of their pocket. Or maybe on the golf course, somebody's scorecard blew away. Now we have to remember that not all trash and litter comes from people that are bad. Sometimes it's truly an accident. Now next thing I have for our model is a little bit of something I like to call animal waste. Now animal waste is something that comes from animals that we're supposed to pick up. So we might find a little bit of animal waste over here near Clifford. Maybe we'd find some over by the cows on the farm. And we might find some at the golf course from some geese or other animals. Or maybe even from the nature preserve. Maybe somebody was walking their dog. Maybe there was a deer in the area. And this last little building right in the middle, this is called a wastewater treatment plant. Now a wastewater treatment plant is where all of our wastewater, which is basically our toilet water, goes to get cleaned. So all of our toilet water, all of our shower water, all of the water from our laundry machine and our dishwasher goes to a wastewater treatment plant where it gets cleaned up and then that water gets dumped into the river. Now, another thing we have to add to our model is a little bit of oil. Now we use oil all the time, mostly for things that have machinery and parts and engines. So we put oil in our cars. Our car engines are designed to have oil and to reuse it again and again. And then when it, doesn't, when it needs to be changed, we take it for an oil change and then we come back and we get new oil. But sometimes our cars don't work as well as they used to and sometimes they leak a little bit of oil. So we might find some on our streets and maybe some by the, fa um, by the construction site and different places like that. We might even find some in our Ohio River from boats and things. Now the last thing I have to add to our model is a little bit of salt. We use salt on our roads to help melt the snow and the ice so it makes it safe for us to drive and to get to school, which I know is really important for you. Now normally we're not using salt in the same season that we're using fertilizers and pesticides, but just as an example I'm going to show you how it works. So we put some salt on our roads to get rid of that snow and ice and make it safe for us to drive. Now. We have our watershed model here that's full of all different types of pollution. And it looks really bad on this little teeny tiny model. But in real life, if we were gonna take this model and we were gonna blow it up life size, you've probably seen signs of every single thing that we've talked about today. You've seen places where the soil isn't covered up and where it rains and mud washes away. You've seen places where people have used fertilizers and pesticides. Um, we've seen places where oil has leaked out of cars and people have thrown litter on the ground. So while it looks like a lot on this little tiny model, if we were to take this and blow this up life size, like I said, you've seen these things all around town. So I have one last thing to add to our model. I brought with me today our great big giant rain cloud, which you might just call a spray bottle. But we're going to see what happens to all of this stuff when we get a nice rainstorm. Now what's happening is the rain is mixing together with all these different types of things on the ground. It's mixing with the soil and the fertilizers and the pesticides, even the animal waste and washing all of this downhill. Remember we said before, water doesn't flow uphill. So all of this stuff is going downhill and what's at the bottom of our hill? Of course our rivers and streams and lakes. So all of this type of stuff that we put down on the ground is going into those rivers, lakes, creeks, streams in all areas of the country and the world, not just here in Cincinnati. So we're left with right now our Ohio River. And those of you who have seen the Ohio River before know that it's certainly not a river that you just go and dip a cup in and take a big drink out of. 
okay? Our Ohio River is fairly polluted. And it's not just from one source. All of these different things that we talked about today are part of the problem. Now, does that mean that we can't use any of these things ever again? Absolutely not. We just have to make sure we use them in the right way and at the right time. It's perfectly okay to use fertilizer to help your grass and your flowers grow. But you know what? You have to read the instructions on the bag. Make sure you're using it at the right amount and don't put it on right before it rains because if we put it on right before it rains, it's just gonna wash right down into the river. If you have an animal like Clifford here, you have to pick up after his waste. And I know that's not the most fun thing in the world to do when you have a giant dog like Clifford, but it's your responsibility as a pet owner to do so. If we see places in our neighborhood or in our local parks that don't have any um, grass or plants growing on the soil and the soil is exposed so that it can just erode away, let's make sure we get a group together and see if we can plant some flowers and some trees and things like that to help hold that soil in place so that it doesn't flow downhill into our rivers. There's all kinds of things that we can do to help our local water quality. Simple things that you can do every day at your own house. Even pick up litter when you're going for a dog walk or a walk in the neighborhood. And that way that litter is not washing down into the river like the other stuff. So thank you for watching our Enviroscape presentation today and learning all of the things that you can do to help our local water quality. For more information, you can go to our website at hcswcd.org. And if you're a teacher and would like a free presentation about the Enviroscape or any other natural resource conservation programs, you can check out our website for more information. Thank you.